Okay, well, that's a prayer for all of us, for all of us teachers, because now more than ever, with the kind of students what, that we have inside our classroom today, we need generosity. We need to uh, go beyond the minimum, okay? We cannot just be what we call minimalistic. Okay, well, I'd like to know, um, do all of you speak Tagalog? Yes, please type chat, uh, type in the chat box, yes, if you are okay with Tagalog. Uh, yes. Uh, anyone who cannot understand Tagalog, please type in the chat box, no. <laughs> okay, if there is anyone who, uh, because sometimes we receive, in our past seminars, we had participants from Hong Kong, Portugal, Sri Lanka, where I was for a year. Okay, great. Well, I, I, I didn't see any no's in our chat box. That means everyone can understand Tagalog. So I hope you wouldn't mind because every now and then I would shift to Tagalog because sometimes that's the best way to emphasize certain things. Kailangan sabihin sa sarili nating wika para ma, ma, mas maliwanag yung gusto kong i, um, sabihin, no? Okay, well, for those of you, because I saw many said um, one or zero, rather, this is the first time you're ever attending any of the Catalyst seminars, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Man Rentoy. I have a double degree in AB Journalism and an MA in Creative Writing and a PhD in Literature in the University of Santo Tomas, UST. And I... Um, there. I founded a school in Iloilo City called Paref Westbridge School. It's an all-boys school and it's now one of the top schools in Region 6. In fact, this coming Thursday, I will be running the seminars from Iloilo. I will be in Westbridge on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So those of you who are with me in this whole week sessions, I will be running the seminars from Westbridge because I will be giving seminars there to all the teachers in the morning. And I served as principal of Intermediate School of South Ridge, my own alma mater. Diyan din ako nagtapos ng high school. Kami ang unang-unang batch of students of South Ridge School in Alabang. And then I, later on, I went back there to be principal of Intermediate School, vice principal of high school, religion department chair and uh, teacher in creative writing, English, Filipino, where I also was moderator of the school paper, which was the very first ever school paper uh, for high school that was elevated to Hall of Fame in the Catholic Mass Media Awards. We won nine trophies from um, CMMA. And in the last 11 years, I have been spending more time going around the Philippines and around the country, uh, around, the, around the world actually, <laughs> reaching out to teachers, parents, community leaders, kasi nakita ko nandito ang crisis, character of the young people especially. Ibang klase na ang mga kabataan ngayon, ano? I mean, those of you who have been teaching for many years, may I know Please type in the chat box, how many years have you been teaching? One, if this is your first year as a teacher, then uh, RJ is on his 16th year. Wow, 10 years na. Si, uh, si Chris Abudiente, uh, 16, si Richie, 11, si Jester, 20 years from Mam Ana. <laughs> teacher Megan, 10 years, 7 years for, for Jadil, Hazel, 11 years, Denise, 8 Wow, most of you are um, senior teachers, no? And uh, congratulations, you have survived so many years. Wala akong nakikitang one or two. Yung ibig sabihin, they're only on their first year as a teacher. So, all of you know what I'm talking about. Nag-iba ang character ng mga kabataan natin ngayon. Ibang klase na. Minsan, iniisip ko, pagpasok ko ng classroom, Ibang klaseng hayop na tong nandito sa classroom ko. <laughs> well, okay. They are different, pero the demands are the same. So anyway, in the last 11 years, I have been spending more time reaching out to fellow teachers like you, 
trying to convince people, let us make character a top priority. Kasi nga, ibang klase na ang mga kabataan ngayon. We need now more than ever to work on the character of the young people. It's a very urgent thing. That's why yan ang ating title ngayon, The Urgency of Character Formation. And I tied up with two international organizations, one based in Washington, D.C., CEP, and the other one based in the State University of New York Center for Fourth and Fifth Arts. That's why, ma'am, sir, ang certificate na matatanggap ninyo indicates participation in an international seminar. Okay, please stay put. I'm going to give later, I'm going to type in the chat box the link where you can um, claim your certificate, your international certificate for every session. Okay, so bibigay ko yung link na yun towards the end of every session this, uh, this next five days. Center for Fourth and Fifth Arts. Because our principle is every human being, aside from knowing reading, writing, arithmetic, should have respect and responsibility, the fourth and fifth R's. And I think you will agree with me, respect, responsibility, these are two very important virtues na in fact, na parang nawawala sa mga kabataan ngayon, ano? Maraming kabataan ngayon parang hindi na marunong rumespeto. Look at the way they post in Facebook, in Twitter, in Instagram, in TikTok. The way they bash people. The way they attack people. Katatapos lang natin ng election, whatever side of the political spectrum you belong, you, I think, will agree. Grabe ang bardagulan <laughs> sa online. The way people um, argued with each other without any sense of respect. And then, responsibility. Pag-uusapan natin yan, these are the um, very important virtues that I thought kailangan natin. Um, so, I tied up with Center for Fourth and Fifth Arts in State University of New York. The president of that um, institute, Dr. Thomas Licona, is the signatory, one of the signatories of the certificate that you're going to receive for every seminar this week. Kaya international seminar ang classification niya. And all the hundreds, no, thousands of our participants in the past have managed to use these certificates to renew their license for uh, CPD. No? Hindi nakasulat CPD doon kasi we are not an accredited CPD provider pero naka-indicate Three hours, in fact, of um, international seminar participation in a three-hour seminar. So all the par past participants have been able to get one is to one. One hour of seminar equivalent to one unit of CPD. And the other thing I have been doing is to bring experts from all over the world to the Philippines to share with us teachers strategies, um, research, knowledge uh, about uh, motivation, classroom management, about um, character, building character. No? So ito yung mga ibang mga participants, that, uh, I mean, um, speakers that I brought to Manila, Dr. Harry Wong, the number one expert on classroom management. He and his wife spoke to 7,000 teachers in SMX. Um, and then this Ian Jukes spoke to another 5,000 uh, teachers in Cebu, in Iloilo, and in Manila on understanding the digital generation. This is the biggest conference I ever organized with the uh, chastity speakers. And they spoke to 15,000 in uh, World Trade Center. And then... Um, Five times I, al I already invited over um, Jason Everett, the number one authority on chastity, purity, modesty. And uh, I continued on even during this um, pandemic. Uh, we had online international conferences with experts like Dr. Michelle Borba, who has 28 best-selling books on character formation. 
And then the most recent one, April um, or March rather, was with Dr. Hal Urban on creating kind and caring homes and classrooms, schools. So today, we're going to talk about a very important topic, urgency of character formation. Alam nyo, uh, I spend a lot of time visiting schools around the Philippines. Minsan tinatanong ko yung mga administrators, principals, Ma'am, ano ang inyong main trust for this year? And many of them would usually answer, ah, th this year we will improve our math program. We will improve our science program. We will improve our, uh, uh, we will have two separate laboratories for chemistry and biology. I hardly heard administrators saying, this year, pagtutuon na namin ng pansin ang character formation kasi ang mga kabataan ngayon, ibang klase na. <laughs> hardly. And so, today's seminar is like an invitation to all of you. Ma'am, sir, let us make character formation a top priority Kasi kailangan ng mga kabataan ito more than math improvement, science improvement, uh, computer, technology improvement. In fact, I believe those things can wait. But character is urgent and cannot wait. But before I proceed, I'd like to say thank you, dear teachers, for not giving up for not quitting. In spite of the pandemic, you forged ahead and continued on. I know it has not been easy the past two or three years because this is not what we were trained to do. Ang training natin, magturo sa loob ng classroom, face to face with our students. Suddenly, the pandemic forced us to teach inside the, um, in the computer, to do the computer, to do modules. And I know many of you had a tough time or continue having a tough time. But kung wala pang nakapagsami sa inyo, maraming salamat for not quitting, for not giving up. You continue teaching. And so I'd like to just give this as a tribute to all of you, dear teachers. Our way of saying maraming salamat Dahil nandyan pa rin kayo in spite of the demands, the challenges brought about by the pandemic. So that's for all of you, dear teachers. Maraming salamat dahil hindi kayo bumitaw. Alam ko maraming mga teachers sa limbawa. I've knows, I know some who actually couldn't take it. I mean, ang sabi nila, this online thing is just not for me anymore. And so I know some teachers who quit, gave up, and uh, look for other ways of surviving or of coping. But you're still there. Thank you. And congratulations, because so far, we have survived. <laughs> you know, if I'm talking to parents, normally, ang title na binibigay ko dito sa presentation na to is Raising Children of Character in a Wired World. I mean, Really, this is a different kind of world now that the young people are living in. And the pandemic, the pandemic just made it even more clear <laughs> that, uh, well, life revolves now for many young people around technology. They live a very technocentric life. Ganito. That's the kids, that's the kind of kids we have now. They learn how to use the gadgets even before they learn how to walk and talk. <laughs> Sabi ng research sa US, ang mga uh, kabataan ngayon, they start using one-third of them. Sabi ng research sa US, one-third one of the kids today start using a gadget while still in diapers. Like this kid, <laughs> he knows how to answer the phone, but he doesn't know how to speak. Maybe he doesn't even know how to walk yet. That's the kind of kids we have right now. They are technocentric. And mind you, it's not going to change. It's not going to go away. 
technology is here to stay. Okay? Our job as adults, as parents, as teachers, is to make sure that this kid is in control of technology and not the other way around. Because that's what I'm seeing among many kids today. It's technology that is controlling them, <laughs> which is very sad. Now, think about it. YouTube is, was not there 20 years ago. 20 years ago. I think not all of us had cell phones. And maybe we did not imagine, we could not, 20 years ago, I think we could not imagine that one day we will be giving classes online. <laughs> 20 years ago was not like that. Now, these young people in your classroom today, the students entrusted to your care today, we are preparing them not just for next week, not just for next month. We're preparing them for 20 years from now. Can you imagine what 20 years from now will look like? It's hard. We cannot even imagine how things are going to be. We don't know. And yet that is what we are preparing the young kids for today. So we cannot even describe it. And yet that is what we are supposed to be preparing them for. This is it. This is the future. <laughs> Okay, now that's actually a good news for us. Na kahit ang mga kabataan ngayon nag-iba na because of the technology, because of the lifestyle, they still learn in the same way from the example of the parents, from the example of the teachers, from the example of the adults. I mean, kanino niya natutunan yung mga paganyan-ganyan? Ano? May paganyan-ganyan pa yung bata. Ano? Meron pang paganyan-ganyan. Ano? Kanino niya natutunan yan? from the example of the parents. In other words, even if the young kids today have changed technologically, they are more adept to technology and gadgets, but they still continue learning in the same way from the example of the adults. That's actually good news for us who are today discussing how can we form the character of the young people. Well, we can teach them to do the example of our life. Sabi ng research, the most affected among all the values, virtues, character, because of this technocentric lifestyle, ang pinaka-apektado ay empathy. Nawawala ang empathy ng mga kabataan. You know why? Because a kid today, a kid today can be spending the whole day with his gadget not dealing with any other kids, with, with other human beings. O nga, eh, no? pag gising pa lang ng bata, hahanapin na yung gadget, yung tablet, yung cellphone. At kung hindi mo yan babantayan, he or she could be playing the whole day. Playing games, surfing, watching videos, watching YouTube and TikTok and Facebook videos without dealing with other human beings, without dealing with other kids. The only way they can learn empathy is by dealing with other people. Pero kung wala nung dealing na yon, then they will not learn empathy. And that's what the pandemic forced the kids to be in. That state of being separated from other people, from other human beings. Sure, may Zoom meeting, may Google Classroom, pero iba, it's just not the same. That's why now more than ever, we need to work on developing empathy among the kids. That is an urgent matter, urgency of character formation. And then the environment is not cooperating. You have an internet that is many times full of hatred, Na, napansin nyo yan nitong nakaraang election yung 
um, attacks from one camp to another, one camp to each other. There was just full of anger, hatred, siraan. Uh, it doesn't matter what political spectrum you belong to, but think about the kids and what they have been um, subjected to. Okay, so in this five days of uh, seminars that we are going to be together, many of you are registered for all the seminars in the five days. Here are the principles that I and CEP hold on to, which will explain bakit kailangan natin itong seminars on character formation. Number one, we believe that every teacher is a character formator, is an agent of character formation. Kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan ninyo. Okay? That as a good teacher and a good educator is not just interested in teaching science, English, and math. We also want the students entrusted to our care to be a good human being. Not just smart, but also good. That is what every good educator do or does. In fact, number two, for us, character formation is not just another subject. Di ba marami sa atin ang natuwa dahil pinag-usapan ng DepEd, ibalik ang GMRC, ibalik ang uh, values education. Okay, pero every teacher is supposed to be forming character, molding minds. It's not just another subject. It's not just covering a curriculum. Education is not just about finishing the syllabus, finishing the curriculum. It's important, but it's not the only thing that we do as good teachers, as good educators. And here it is. Diba ang title natin? Urgency of Character Formation, Strategies and Proven Methods. My dear teachers, let me give you now the most important strategy, the powerful example of our life. That is how we can form the character of the students entrusted to our care. Take note of my expression, students entrusted to our care. You are not just hired by the school, given a subject to teach. You are given students to take care of, to form the minds of, to mold the character of. You see the big difference? We are not just here to cover the curriculum. Now, there's no other better way. You and I teach professionalism, for example, in the way we come to the classroom every single day professionally, punctually, on time. Kaya napansin ninyo, Announcement natin, the seminar is 3 to 5. And we started the session at 3 o'clock. That's what professional do. Professional people do. They begin on time. And we will end on time also. So, professionalism. In the way we talk to the kids, we will teach the kids kindness in the way we treat them with kindness. We will teach them Self-control in the way we control our temper, our anger, our frustration when we are with the students. Kaya, one of the topics this week is on classroom management. Kasi, how can you teach character if you're the kind of teacher I know in another school na shouting, screaming, yelling just to get the students to do what they want them to do? Well, I'm going to share with you strategies in that session on how to get the students do what you want them to do without ever having to shout, scream, and yell. Because there are effective ways of being able to do that. There's no other better way to teach character than through the powerful example of our life. That's why, ma'am, sir, you are the most important teaching tool in the classroom. Kahit mapa online pa tayo, hindi yan nasa laptop ninyo, nasa desktop ninyo. It's still the teacher who makes the big difference. 
in the education of the children. We are the most important teaching tool. Our life, our example, the way we deal with them, the way we treat them, those are all because of the teacher. And therefore, what I love to say is, your school is only as good as the teachers. Tayo ang pinag-uusapan ng mga magulang. It's not about the facilities of the campus. Uh, kahit anong ganda ng um, tradition, halimbawa, ng skwelahan, uh, because it has been there for years. Pero pag nagkataon ang mga teachers ng studyante in one year, hindi magaling, naninigaw, nananakit, not um, living an exemplary life as man or woman of character, then all those other things become unimportant. It's only the teacher that determines how good or how bad the school is. We are the teachers. The, the school, rather, is only as good as its teachers. So those are our principles. That's why... He, Nabanggit ko na yung example. I'm sorry, but I will repeat that over and over again. There's no other better way to teach character than through the example of the teachers. When I go to the strategies and proven methods, lalabas at lalabas pa ulit ulit the example of the teacher. But let's first understand the children today. Kasi ang topic natin is... Uh, strategies and proven methods, we will only be effective if we understand where the children are coming from, <clears throat> where they are coming from. Here are the students you have today. Look at the challenges they have to face. And some of these were not there when we were younger. Generally, especially dahil sa pandemic na nangyari and many kids were glued in front of the computer the whole time, generally, there is addiction to video games. The video games that they spend hours in because they get addicted. And then, nandyan yung violence in media. Minsan nga, kahit sa ano lang eh, uh, prime time news, TV patrol, 24 horas, the violence that they see, their crimes and reports on criminalities and murder and assault and rape and uh, all these things that they are subjected to. There is so much violence in media. Sabi ng research sa US, by the time a kid turns 13 years old, he would have witnessed 18,000 murders from movies in Netflix, from movies in YouTube, from television shows like Game of Thrones, and then especially video games. Video games na the more they kill, the more points they get, the higher level you go. They are subjected to so much violence. And then, mamaya, pag-uusapan pa natin yung malaking problema of pornography. The young people today, sabi ng research, a kid today, even as young as eight, nine years old, can be subjected to the most harmful pornographic images because it's available readily in the internet now. They can be subjected to the most harmful vid uh, visuals. And then nandiyan yung materialism and then nandiyan yung hedonism, especially because now, pag gumising sila ng 2 a.m., abay, ang dami pang channels to choose from in cable. More than 1 billion videos in YouTube to choose from. And all these bring about materialism and hedonism. Kahit nga sa Facebook video, TikTok, YouTube, ay, ang daming commercials, advertisements. Nanonood ka ng um, napakaikling video, you have to watch first a 10-second ad, 15-second ad. E lahat naman ng advertisements are all about <clears throat> just do it. Please yourself. Drink. Uh, satisfy your thirst. It's all about materialism and hedonism. And the kids today are subjected to all these. And then, here's more. Nung bata ako, some of these things were not there. But now, 
young kids are subjected to religious indifference, the reality of divorce, broken, broken families. They may have friends, classmates that, well, families that um, break up, alcoholism, softness, moral relativism, fake heroes presented by uh, star cinema and Hollywood and um, sa mga movies and then drug addiction. All these are challenges young kids today are faced with. And then, sabi ng research, they are in a highly sexualized culture. Parabang everything that they see in here, movies, television shows, MTVs, billboards, magazines, websites, uh, apps, Twitter, and I mean sex and sexuality, sex and violence, but especially on sex. It's absurd that um, minsan commercial ng um, iPhone, halimbawa, anong kinalaman ng mga babaeng nakabikini uh, dun sa product? Wala ano, parang there's just highly sexualized culture that the young people are subjected to. And that's why pornography is a problem. Alam nyo, sabi ng Pornhub, number one for the ninth straight year ang Philippines in hours spent in Pornhub. Tapos nakakagulat yung, re- yung report nila ng 2021. There were more women, sabi ng Pornhub report, there were, there were more women who accessed pornography in 2021 than men. 53% women, 47% men. Th- that's their report. So parang ikagugulat natin na ba- bakit ang akala ko yung mga... Um, high school boys lang ang may problema. Hindi, sabi ng Pornhub, there were more women. So, that's, um, this is 2018 and now it's 2022. Philippines still is number one in terms of hours spent online in the pornography, pornographic site. And it's going to become uh, more and more difficult as a challenge because even kids today have their own cell phones. Di ba? Pag, uh, alam mo, pag nakakakita ako ng ganitong bata, na, uy, batang bata pa lang, ano? pero yung cell phone niya, high-tech, dun siya nanonood ng movies, dun siya nag-games, nag-video games, nakikinig ng music, gumagawa ng sarili niyang video, nag-edit ng kanyang vi- Wow! Sometimes I feel upset because naaalala ko, pinag-ipunan ko, pinaghirapan ko, para makabili ako ng una kong Nokia 3210. Ayan. And here's a kid who doesn't have salary, who did not save money to be able to buy that phone. Bin- nabigay sa kanya yan ng nanay niya, ng lola niya. <laughs> And that's why what we are complaining about many times is ang lakas ng self on, of, uh, sense of entitlement ng maraming kabataan ngayon. O nga naman, kasi, uh, you know, you've heard kids coming to your, to the parents, Mami, Daddy, kailangan ko ng cellphone na ako na lang ang wala sa klase. Ayan. Like as if I deserve it, I demand it, because all my classmates already have their own cellphone. <laughs> Or, during this pandemic, di ba, dumating yung na, ang anak ninyo. Sabi ng anak ninyo sa inyo, Nay, tay, kailangan natin ng high-speed internet, ha? Eh, hindi pwede yung mabagal. Kailangan ko for my project, homework, assignment, um, modules. Ayan. Tapos ikaw naman, sasabihin mo tumahimik ka, eh, grade 1 ka pa lang. <laughs> ano pang high-speed, high-speed internet mo dyan? But that's how they talk, right? Parabang they are entitled to it. They deserve it. They should have it. They must have the latest. They have to upgrade. The environment is manipulating them to have that kind of sense of entitlement. It's a challenge. I repeat, technology is here to stay. It's not going to go away. Our job is just to make sure 
itong batang ito, lalaking may character. And with strength of character, fortitude, temperance, that he is in control of technology and not the other way around. Because yung mga apps designers, engineers, computer engineers, they are just coming out with more and more apps for kids still in diapers, di ba? I mean, batang-bata pa lang, para bang minamanipulate na sila ng environment to be technocentric. Abay ko lang na lang, they come up with something for unborn kids. Yan. Para bang hindi pa nga pinapanganak, meron ng naghihintay para sa kanila to make them technocentric, addict, addicted to gadgets, to technology, to cell phone, to tablets. Yan. The, effectively, the environment is fostering their selfishness, self-centeredness. I mean, wala naman selfie-selfie nung bata ako. Hindi ko pinipicturan yung aming kaldereta at saka pinakbet para ipaalam sa buong kapitbahay, ito ang ulam namin ngayon. Ito ang aming pananghalian. I, I never had to do that. But the kids today, I, I see many kids today, kailangang picturan muna ang kanilang Starbucks coffee at ipaalam sa buong mundo, sa kanilang buong kabarkada, ang dito ako ngayon sa Starbucks, sa Starbs. Uh, ito ang aking hapunan ngayon. Kailangan i-Instagram muna nila yan. Kailangan i-post sa Facebook. Kailangan i-tweet. Kailang... Many young people today are of that mindset now. Kaya ang researchers, ang tawag dyan, the pageantry of vanity. Waiting for people to like their posts. Ayan, pagising pa lang sa umaga, iniisip nila, ilan na kaya ang nag-like dun sa pinos ko kagabing pizza pie? <laughs> ilan na kaya ang nag-comment? It's like a, the environment has manipulated them to, uh, to be vain, to be self-centered, to be so obsessed with likes and comments and followers. Diba? That's the kind of world the young people are living in. Uh, kaya hindi ko maintindihan ito. Halimbawa, mga kabataan, mag-EFB live. Waiting for people to like, to comment. Yung comment na, ate, kuya, pa-shout out naman. Yan. Parang anong... Anong kinaganda ng buhay mo pag na-shout out ang pangalan mo? <laughs> but, that, but that's the kind of world the young people are living in now. Let me remind you, ma'am, sir, huwag kayong magalit sa mga kabataan when they start living their life like this, going FB Live, expressing their thoughts to the whole world in Twitter, in Instagram. Popost pa, din, pa, popost pa nila doon, pati yung away nila with their kapatid, nanay, tatay, di ba ganyan yung mga bata ngayon? Ano? Para bang um, ilaladlad sa buong, uh, sa buong mundo ang kanilang galit. Ayan. Let's not blame them for it. It's not their fault that they happen to be born and they happen to be teenagers at this time and age when we have all these technology sabi ko nga minsan sa mga teachers, siguro kung may cellphone dati, ginawa mo rin yun. Uh, nag, ano ka rin, crowdsourcing. Siguro, uh, mga kapitbahay, kailangan ko ng atsuete para sa aking, bago, uh, sa aking ano, yung binagoongan at saka sa aking adobong niluluto. Anyone has extra uh, malunggay for, mong, for my monggo, ginisang monggo? I mean, in other words, We may have actually also used it if it was available for us when we were younger. Now, the young people today just happen to be in this time and age where there is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. And so let's not take it against them. Let's not give up on them. In fact, that's the message. What we need to do is to help them make sense of this digital um, horizon before them and then train them in character so that they don't have this 
constant craving to be connected. Di ba? May mga ganyan akong nakilalang mga teenagers para bang ang kanilang kaligayahan uh, is dependent on how strong the Wi-Fi connection is. Yan. Pag malakas ang Wi-Fi, abay, napakasaya. Pagka nawala ang connection, naku, they can get angry, depressed, frustrated, cursing smart and globe. <laughs> mainit ang ulo kasi hindi na nila alam that they're missing out yan so um okay let's now go to what i want to discuss really is what do we do okay the, um, the first part i wanted you to understand wow oo nga mr antoy napaka urgent nga nitong character formation more than anything oo nga kailangan nga nating pagtuunan ng pansin ang character formation ng mga kabataan ngayon. More urgent than improving science, math, and English, we need to make them resilient, strong in character, may temperance, uh, may kindness, may empathy, may respect, may responsibility. And that's what this whole seminar this week is all about. Okay, now, hindi pa tayo tapos sa problema ng mga kabataan ngayon. Here is another reason why now more than ever, kailangan nating uh, palakasin ang ating character formation because we have more and more kids inside our Zoom room, inside our classroom, inside our Google Meet room, Dumadami yung mga estudyante natin coming inside our room who come from broken families. Who come from dysfunctional families. Not strong and healthy, but dysfunctional families. Now, maybe not necessarily naghiwalay ang asawa, ang nanay, ang tatay. Pero we have cases like that, di ba? Yung I had students na parabang iniwan sila ng tatay niya, hindi man lang nagpaalam, nawala na lang sa buhay nila. But we also have what we call children of absentee parents. Diba? Marami tayong mga estudyante na ngayon na ganyan. Ang nagpapalaki, yung lola. Yung kapitbahay. May estudyante ako ang nagpapalaki, kapitbahay. Because both mom and dad preferred to work abroad. Na, they're not bad parents. OFWs are not bad parents. I know most of them, if not all of them, decided to leave the country and work abroad because they want a better life for their families. They want a good life for their children. They're doing it out of love for their, for their children. But you and I, teachers, na nasa loob ng classroom in the last 20 years, 30 years, we know pag wala ang mga magulang, iba, iba ang disiplina ng bata. I mean, it's just different if the parents are directly involved in raising the kids. So, we have more and more situations like this where kids are um, not attended to. <laughs> or the parents are absentee. Minsan nakikita natin, ay kaya pala ganito yung batang ito. Laging antukin. Kasi nagko-computer games hanggang 1 a.m. kasi nga naman walang supervision ng parents. Absente sila. Hindi napapaala, napapaalalahanan. So we have more and more cases like that. Okay, let's go to the second point of our talk. The first part is urgency. And at this point, I hope all of you already agree with me. Ay oo nga, hindi ko na-realize to. Kung gaano ka urgent, important, most essential now more than ever that we form the character of the young people. Now we go to the second part. What can we do, Mr. Antoy? What are the strategies? What are the proven methods that we can use so that we form the character of the young people kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan namin? Well, here it is. By your example, this is the second time we're mentioning it. We teach them kindness in the way we treat them with kindness. Kahit na minsan ang hirap 
magpasyensya sa mga kabataan ngayon. <laughs> Kahit na many times they push us to the edge of our patience. <laughs> By our example, we will be able to teach them kindness, empathy, respect. That's why a teacher cannot be resorting to shouting, screaming, yelling, hurting, insulting. I've visited so many schools and I've met teachers who are like that. Ang kala nila, the harsher their words, the more disciplined the student will become, di ba? May, may ganyang teacher minsan, ano? Na um, sasabihin sa bata, hayop kang bata ka, halika nga rito, hindi ka pinalaki ng tama ng magulang mo. Things like that, ang isip ng teacher, the harsher their words, the more disciplined the student will become. It used to work in the 1960s, maybe even in the 1970s, yung pinapaluhod sa munggo at saka sa asin, <laughs> it used to work. It used to be effective. Not anymore today. The kids will just be full of resentment. He will not listen anymore to you. He will think of us as enemy. And he will think of the school as um, hell. I mean, we have students who already are like that. Na especially pag nagkaroon sila ng teacher who doesn't know how to discipline. Well, it's not even disciplining. It's managing teachers who don't know how to manage their, their class. They resort to shouting, screaming, yelling, insulting, using harsh words. No, let's learn the better way of doing things. Because we teach character to do the example of our life by our direction, by our verbal explanation. Salimbawa, ma'am, sir, kung meron pa kayong classes these days, hindi pa kayo nagsa-summer break. The election time that just finished is a very good teaching moment. Regardless of what subject you are teaching, sometimes you may need to comment on the hottest issues of the day to tell the students what is right, what is wrong, what is moral, what is unacceptable, what is they have to hear from the adults. Verbal explanation, verbal direction, regardless of what subject you're teaching. And it's not a waste of time because you are not just there to finish a curriculum to teach a syllabus, you are there to form the young people to grow up to be smart and especially good. Let me give you now 10 tips for raising moral kids according to Michelle Borba. As our way of starting, Sige nga, Mr. Antoy, what can we do to form the character of our students? Tip number one, let's commit to it. In the first place, I have to thank you, dear teachers, because you are in this seminar, that means you are interested to form character and to mold minds. Otherwise, you would not have signed up. You would not have found time to sit through a two-hour lecture. Because research says parents who feel strongly about their kids turning out morally usually succeed because they committed themselves to that effort. The same research says teachers who feel strongly about their students turning out morally usually succeed because they committed themselves to that effort. Let us commit ourselves to this effort that we are not just here to teach math, science, and English. We are here helping these young people to become good, good men and women. Not just to pass a quiz, not just to pass a test, but especially to grow up to be the kind of person God wants them to be that you too would want them to be. Okay, that's actually tip number two. Be a strong moral example. And yes, this is not the first time we're saying it. This is already the third no, about being an example. But that is it. You want 
your young people, your students to grow up to be men and women of character, be a moral example. From our example, from the way we treat them, from the way we talk to them, makikita nila what it means to be a good person. Okay. Each day, ask yourself, if my student had only my behavior to watch, what example would he catch? And yes, sometimes, kasi nga, sabi natin kanina, maraming mga parents ngayon who may not be there for the students because they're abroad, because they themselves are busy working. And so, minsan tayo lang ang adult that they see in a day. Especially because magbabalik tayo. Um, sooner or later, we're back to the usual classroom setting, face-to-face -face classes. It's just a matter of time. This is not forever. Itong pandemic where we had we are forced to do online teaching, this is not going to be forever. We will go back to face-to-face -to -face teaching. Number three, know your beliefs and share them. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan mo, minsan you need to talk about the issues of the day, the headlines of the day. And don't be afraid to do so. Talk about your values. Talk about what you consider good, immoral, and moral, important, unimportant. Because if you don't, if you don't talk about these things, it's the opposite messages that they always hear in MTVs, in videos, being passed around in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, uh, television, internet. Let us not lose by default. That's why we talk about values, patriotism, love for one's country, love for the truth. We have to talk about that with the young people. And standing up for what is right, that is something important. Na kahit chemistry ang subject mo, kahit no, social studies, kahit, na, kahit anong subject ang tinuturo mo, we find a way of being able to talk to our students about what, what, what matters most the values that we want them to also learn. Number four, use teachable moments. Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, the recent election is a very powerful teachable moment where pwede natin ituro sa mga kabataan something that they don't normally learn inside the four walls, within the four walls of the classroom. Use teachable moments. For example, maraming bumagsak sa quiz that's a teachable moment. You talk to them about resilience and standing up again and the importance of hard work and studying and not giving up. Lahat sila pumasa, that's a teachable moment in humility. In you see what happens when you exert effort? You, in other words, you are strengthening the values that they already have. Number five. Use discipline as a moral lesson. You know, rather than going around detained, detention, uh, you have to be punished. That's disciplining simply. Instead of simply disciplining, use it as an opportunity to teach a moral lesson. John, I heard you teasing your classmate. How would you feel if you were the one being teased? That becomes a moral lesson rather than simply punishing, you are making that, that um, occasion to drive home a moral lesson. Um, cheating, di ba? Uh, Jan, nag-submit ka ng cut and paste, and I think you've already admitted it. Now, instead of simply saying, you're suspended, you will have to... No, use it as an occasion to talk about, you realize what cheating is why it is unfair, why it is unjust, while your classmates exerted the effort and spent time and effort in doing their assignment, you took the shortcut of cutting and pasting. You see? And that is more important than simply punishing. Discipline as a moral lesson. Number six, expect moral behavior. I always say this, for example, to my students. Okay, class, next week ang ating exama. Please, 
don't even think about cheating. Study hard. Prepare for it. Start preparing. Start studying now. Not next week, the day before the exam. Now, because I expect you to always be upright. You will not even think about cheating. You see, that's expecting moral behavior at all times. Number seven, one of the things we need to make the young people do today more and more is to do reflection because they don't think about, many times they don't think about their action. Any activity you make the students do that will force them to reflect is a good exercise. Journal writing, for example, because they live in a world that is full of noise. The only way you can reflect is in silence. E paano ka magsa-silence? May mga bata nga na naka-earphones pag matutulog with the music playing, di ba? And then pag gising pa lang, uh, check ng Facebook, check ng YouTube, check ng TikTok. There's so much noise. They're subjected to so much noise. What we need to do is give them opportunities to reflect in silence. Think about your action. Think about the effect of your not having studied kaya hindi maganda ang grade na lumabas sa exam mo. Make them think about all these things so that they themselves will realize, oh nga, it's my fault. I have to study harder next time. I cannot be lazy next time. I cannot cram next time. I cannot study just the day before. I have to prepare. Reflect on the behavior's effects. Number eight, reinforce moral behavior. May mga bata nagko-complain sa akin, Sir, alam mo, yung teacher namin yan, wala nang nakita kundi mali. Yan. Wala na siyang napans- nakita sa amin kundi mali. O nga naman, kasi para bang wala na, parang kung may maling ginawa ang mga bata, naku, buong linggo yan, pagagalitan niya yung class, paaalala yung kanilang pagkakamali. Pero pag gumawa sila ng kabutihan, they studied hard, they helped each other, aba, wala kang maririnig sa teacher. No, we look for those good things that they do and reinforce them. John, I heard you helped Joanna, uh, who was absent last time, and you helped her catch up with what she missed. Good job. Good job. That's what it means to be caring. That's what it means to be kind. And I expect you all to do the same because someday kayo mismo siguro ang mga ngailangan ng tulong and you will appreciate if your classmates will help you. You see, that kind of reinforcing moral behavior. Joanna, I saw you picking up trash even if I didn't tell you. Good job. That's what it means to be responsible. Keep it up. That's reinforcing moral behavior. Look for those good things that you can praise the action, not necessarily the person, but the action is what you complement. Number nine, dapat makilala tayo ng mga estudyante as that. Alam mo yan si ma'am, talagang ano, ang gusto niya upright tayo. Never mind if 82 lang ang makukuha mo, basta... Um, you really exerted the effort, you worked hard, you didn't cheat. Ganyan si ma'am, mas mahalaga sa kanya yung that we are moral, that we are good, that we follow rules, that we obey, that we are responsible, etc. Prioritize morals daily. And then finally, number 10 tip on how your kids, your students can grow up to be moral talk about the golden rule it's not passe it's not um old time it's not it's still valid do unto others what you would want others do unto you do not do unto others what you would not want others do unto you incorporate the golden rule talk about this class joey is absent today if you were absent what would you want your classmates to do to help very good so please find a way of letting joey know that we have an upcoming quiz that we have a scheduled exam that this is what he missed today okay as you would also want the same to be done to you if you happen to be absent so those are the 10 tips 
Because, sabi ni Michelle Borba, without morals, the young people do not learn how to deal with others correctly and appropriately. Okay, kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan character, good character. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng good character? Well, let's look at Plato, Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas. Ano ang sinabi nila about being good or having good character? For them, ito ang sampung content that constitute good character. Wisdom, may good judgment. Justice, golden rule. Fortitude, inner toughness. May self-control. Love, knowing how to sacrifice for others. Positive attitude. Hard work. Integrity, honesty with yourself. Don't cheat, don't cut and paste, don't. Gratitude. And then humility. Yeah, may mga alam akong uh, skwelahan. Ang ginawa nila, they make this 10 one month for every uh, one virtue for every month so may virtue of the month sila uh, june wisdom july justice uh, august fortitude and then the teachers the class advisors will comment about these virtues or maybe they will ask the students write three suggestions that you can give your classmates on how to pra practice good judgment, how we can live golden rule, how we can be, um, how we can develop fortitude or inner toughness, etc. Okay, more strategies, more proven methods. Here are other things that you, teachers, can do in order to develop character. Kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan ninyo. Here it is. Introduce the young people to appropriate role models. Kahit anong subject tinuturuan mo, look for those people you can talk about that you can present as role models. For example, science teachers. Diba? You can talk to the students about... Um, you can talk to the students about uh, scientists who persevered. Uh, Thomas Edison failed more than a thousand times, but he didn't give up. That's why he was able to discover the light bulb. Yeah. Uh, mathematicians, there are great mathematicians who are also philosophers, and they lived an exempl exemplary life. Social studies, history, th there are so many characters in history, historical characters that you can present as brave men, courageous men, patriotic men and women, we can present them as appropriate role models. Kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan mo, let's look for those people, exemplary people in that field that we can present to the young people as appropriate role models. We mentioned direct and indirect instruction, meaning to say kahit na walang kinalaman sa lesson mo minsan, you may need to comment about character. For example, uh, sure, chemistry ang subject mo. Pero may alam kang studyante na nagkopyahan cheating. Well, there at that moment, it's a teachable moment and you have to drive home the point about uprightness, honesty. If they cannot be honest now, they will have a hard time being honest in the future. These politicians who steal, who are dishonest, who Chances are, when they were students, they did not learn honesty. So things like that. We have to teach them about these things directly or indirectly, whatever subject we are handling. Okay, well, let me share with you some um, references in the last remaining strategies I'm going to share with you. <clears throat> The first one, I, I'm going to especially use this when I talk about classroom management. The best book on classroom management that you can find, Harry Wong, Harry and Rosemary Wong's First Days of School. Some of the ideas I'm going to share now, and especially when I talk about classroom management, came from Harry Wong. And then, very important book, I 
I'm going to share with you strategies and proven methods from the book of Rafe Esquith. Teach like your hair is on fire. The Methods and Madness of Room 56. That's actually the complete title. And he is a spectacular teacher. I'm going to share some of his strategies with you because they are fantastic. He's been a teacher for 28 years in a school in Los Angeles where most of the students are English as second language um, students. No? And yet, grade five, he's been handling grade five. Um, his students in grade five, all of them end up being able to study in Harvard, Stanford, Yale, and other top universities. Many of them have already graduated and are now highly successful professionals. How did he do it? He taught for character. And I'm going to share some of those strategies, especially today from Rafe Esquith. By the end of grade five, lahat ng studyante niya are able to publish a book. <laughs> How did he do it? I'm going to share some of those strategies with you. By the end of grade five, they are able to stage a Shakespeare play which gets invited throughout the, uh, the, the country, the U.S. They even perform before all the judges, before all the senators and congressmen uh, and women, before the legislators, um, the best teacher of character. And yet, in his classroom, he is the teacher of all the subjects. It's a self-contained classroom. So lahat ng subjects siya ang nagahandle from morning to dismissal. No? The bell rings at 7.30, <clears throat> but all his students are inside the classroom every day by 6 a.m., excited to do math and English drills. How does he do it? And they are not forced. They are excited to be there. I'm going to share some of those strategies, especially when I go to class advisory, um, another subject, another topic this week. And then the bell rings at 3.30 for dismissal, but all his students prefer to stay up to 6 p.m. to practice for the Shakespeare play. How does he do it? I'm going to share those strategies with you. So that's Rafe Esquith. Teach like your hair is on fire. He put all his strategies there, and I'm going to share some of those with you. And then Hal Urban's book, Lessons from the Classroom, 20 Things Good Teachers Do. If there's time, I will also tackle some of the strategies and proven methods from Hal Urban. Sabi nila, this is the best book available in the market on how to teach for character. If you're interested to have a copy of this, I have a, a lot of um, copies available for sale. Uh, you can email me in the the registration email that um, you also um, sent your registration to. Okay, so here it is. Let's go to the first principle and first strategy of Rafe Esquith. Sabi niya, the young people today, more than anything, need to develop delayed gratification. Kasi nga naman, the society, the um, atmosphere, the environment, is manipulating them to have instant gratification. Diba? That's the one of the biggest weaknesses, one of the biggest defects of many young people today. Kailangan instant lahat. They don't know how to wait. They are impatient. They don't know how to delay gratification. So anything you make the students do that develop delayed gratification you are not just helping them to pass a subject, you're helping them to be a good human being in this kind of environment they find themselves in. So, Mr. Antoy, give us strategies, example on how to develop delayed gratification. Here's a first one. Talk to the kids about the two marshmallow experiment. You remember this experiment, diba? Kids were put in a room. Tapos an adult uh, distributed two marshmallows per kid. And the adult told them, okay, kids, I'm going to leave you. When I come back, 
if you have not eaten your marshmallows, you are going to get two more. But if you've eaten it already, then sorry, you don't get any. Hindi alam ng mga bata, they are being observed in a one-way mirror. Hindi nila alam na inoobservahan sila. As soon as the adult leaves the room, abay, some kids walang delayed gratification, kinain agad yung marshmallows. Some kids may pakurot-kurot muna ng marshmallow before finally eating it, they failed. But others had delayed gratification and they used methods in order not to fall into that temptation. They didn't look at the marshmallows. They looked somewhere else. Now, that's not the experiment yet. Sinundan ng researchers ang buhay nitong mga batang ito. And they discovered 15 years later, those kids who had self-control, temperance, delayed gratification, were high achievers, successful, and above average performers. While those who do not have delayed gratification, walang self-control, walang discipline, walang temperance, were below average performers. Some of them were failures. Some of them were even kicked out already. May correlation ang delayed gratification with success. Okay? Talk to the kids about this so that they are made conscious about the need to develop delayed gratification. Now, here are more strategies. Make them do modeling or rug project. Alam mo modeling na, okay class, make a diorama of uh, the 20th, the turn of the century, town plaza, yan, social studies, ano? or chemistry, uh, make a diorama or um, yung visual representation of the chemical bonds. Yan. Because when they do those modeling, yung, they have to carefully glue together tiny little pieces to form a car, to form a karite, um, kalesa, uh, make a map of the Philippines using a rug. And they have to be very careful about every inch putting the right color. All those are delayed gratification. They develop delayed gratification. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin yun. They have to do it carefully, inch by inch, putting the right color, the right uh, thread. That's developing delayed gratification. And you can insert this as an activity in any subject. Find a way of making the students do a modeling or rug project. Here's another strategy, board games. Board games, according to Rafe Esquith, is a perfect way to develop in them strategizing. Like chess, they have to be uh, two steps ahead of their opponent. Hindi pwedeng mamadaliin. You have to study every move carefully. You cannot be careless. You have to delay gratification. That's board games. That's why sa classroom ni Rafe, he would make available many chess board games. Uh, during recess, kids can play board games. They uh, scrabble. Yung playing with other human beings where you have to be careful about every move you make. It's developing delay gratification. Here's another strategy, jigsaw puzzles. He encourages the families to you know, have those jigsaw puzzles with 1,000 pieces na hindi mo pwedeng mamadaliin. You have to put every little piece in the right place. Kung hindi, hindi mo mabubuo yung puzzle. Delayed gratification. Tapos after putting all the pieces together, uh, it's a picture pala of the Colosseum. It's a picture of the painting of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, painting of uh, Michelangelo, delayed gratification, where you have to study every move, every piece, and putting it in the right place. Here is another strategy, according to Rafe that develops delayed gratification in a perfect way. And I know here in the Philippines, maraming skwelahan tinanggal na to as an activity, gardening, when in fact, it's supposed to be a very effective way to develop delayed gratification among the students. 
hindi pwedeng mamadaliin yan. Hindi pwedeng paglagay mo ng mongo seed, uh, butasan natin para lumabas kagad yung dahon. Uh, damihan natin ang tubig para talagang mabilis. Ang... Hindi, we have to learn how to wait. <laughs> Delayed gratification. So, anything, any activity that you do with the students that will make them wait, make them be patient, make them study every move, careful about every step of the, um, the formula, all those are developing the late gratification. And you are not just helping them pass a class or a subject, you're helping them to cope with the kind of environment they live in where everything has to be instant. Math teachers, sabi ni Rafe, you are in a position to teach kids one of the most crucial skills they need, problem-solving skill. Diba? And that's what you do in problem-solving in math. That's why he even recommends this website, mathstories.com. It contains a lot of problems that students can work on in the math subject that will help them develop analytical skills, evaluative skills, and synthesis, and mathstories.com. Make use of your subject to teach them a very essential and important life skill, making decisions, solving, solving problems. Okay, I mentioned kanina si Rafe would take advantage of the lunch and recess. Kids can play um, board games during lunch or recess. And then he would also make himself available to teach those who want to learn, to teach, um, to, to learn uh, guitar or keyboard. So he would teach them, those who want the um, guitar or playing the keyboard. By the end of grade 5, lahat ng students ni Rafe know how to play the guitar, how to play the keyboard, or both. Kaya life-changing talaga yung kanilang grade 5 with Rafe Esquith. By the way, that community, the um, uh, Hobart uh, school where he has been teaching for 28 years, most of the students there end up failed expelled or even jailed except those who pass through the grade 5 class of Rafe Esquith that's how powerful character formation is students there are from very poor community and many of them end up like that failed kicked out or even jailed except every single one who passes through the grade 5 class of Rafe Esquith. How I wish you can get hold of a copy of his book, for, uh, the, um, Teach Like Your Hair is on Fire, because he discusses there many other strategies. Now, of course, I know what some of you are thinking. Hindi ko kaya yan. Ang dami ko nang kailangan check ng papers. Ang daming requirements sa amin ng principal namin. Tapos magtuturo pa ako ng ano? Gitara at saka keyboard. I don't even, ako mismo, I don't know how to play the guitar. Well, um, but making them play chess, for example, or scrabble during lunch or recess break, you don't need to play with them, but make them spend their time doing that. In other words, um, kaya nga ang title ng book niya is Methods and Madness. These are already part of the madness only a crazy teacher who is really passionately concerned about developing a uh, character of the students will resort to special things like this and will go out of his way pero kung nakita natin kanina ay oo nga urgent ang character well this is how we can address the crisis in character among many young people by resorting to special ways by which they will develop character. Here's another strategy from Rafe. Make them read The Little Prince 
by Antoine de Saint Exupéry, which is, I'm sure, if not all of you, most of you have read the book. Uh, it's not a very long one. And yet, kahit na binasa mo yan ng grade 4, ng fourth year college, ng as a professional, as a teacher now, if you read it, you will still get life, um, life skills, life lessons that are very important. The, the, what is essential is invisible to the eyes. There's no shop where one can buy friendship. You know, the lessons like that. Na at any age that you read the book, iba ang dating and you still get very important wisdom, nuggets of wisdom that will help you live your life well. So, it's good. Now, sabi ko kanina, the students, the, ring, the bell rings at 3.30, pero they prefer to stay up to 6, practicing for a Shakespeare play. Now, it's not just about having a play and being able to stage a play. What is important here in the play theater that he does is delayed gratification. Hindi mo pwedeng mamadaliin yun. You have to memorize the lines. You have to learn the blocking, the movements. You have to uh, memorize the movements. You have to teach the students when the music starts and when the background the music uh, is supposed to be playing and things like that. No? So, um, play theater as a way of developing delayed gratification, teamwork, camaraderie, friendship, those are what we are more after. It's not just about being able to stage a play, okay? That's why, you know, um, some schools, di ba, pag may drama sila, may theater, sasabihin ng director, okay, those in Act 1, only you will have rehearsal today. Ay hindi, sa kanya, kahit wala kang role to play, in that scene that is being rehearsed, you observe, you watch, because the important thing is that you work together, that you develop friendship, that you develop camaraderie, that you are together in this, in, in such a way na one day you need to present the play. May sakit yung isa. No problem. Everybody knows the part because they were all there the whole time of the rehearsals. So. Play theater as a way to develop delayed gratification and friendship and camaraderie. Okay, some more ideas. You know, I'm not going to discuss all of these because some of these belong to the classroom management or the um, advisory that I will also tackle, I think, if not Wednesday, Thursday. No? But even just reading the names of these strategies will give you ideas. Ay, oo nga, student of the year recognition, search for the most outstanding class advisor, search for the most innovative teacher, cooperative learning, starting a class with a workload, having a class website. Okay, so um, in the class or yeah, in the session on class advisory, I'm going to discuss in detail the Class Excellence Award. But we will not even tackle that. I will just go over these other concrete strategies. And we are down to the last few minutes of our session today. Okay, here it is. Here's a concrete strategy. Kahit anong subject ang tinuturuan mo, you can use in your class. Diba sabi ko kanina sa inyo, nagre mga bata? Wala na raw nakita si ma'am, kundi mali. Okay, then here is a strategy. Okay, class, I have a bowl here in front of me. Best is if it is a transparent bowl, you know, like the fish bowl, tapos walang laman. And then, class, every time I catch somebody doing a good thing, I'm going to put one pebble or one marble, or uh, kung wala kang makuhang pebble, wala kang marble, then yung binilog na papel. 
every time I catch, I catch somebody doing a good thing, I'm going to put one marble inside the bowl. And the objective is you do as many good things so that we are able to fill up the bowl with those marbles representing good deeds. Um, yeah, so uh, every time you catch somebody, for example, Joanna, I saw you picking up trash even if I didn't tell you to. Good job. You made the class win a marble in the good deeds bowl or pebble in the good deeds bowl. Our objective is to fill it up because once we fill up the bowl with good deeds, then I will offer a reward for the class. Whether it is we will watch a movie, I'm going to give you free period, you can read whatever book you want, we're going to play um, um, Quizby, we're going to have uh, Jim Kana in the, um, in the gym looking for, you know, itong mga bring me games like that, no? or whatever it is that they will look forward to. Um, okay, Joey, I was told that you helped Joanna, who was absent last meeting. Good job. You have made the class win a marble in the Good Deeds Bowl. This week, this row five, all of them have been reciting excitedly and participating in the class. Good job, guys. The six of you have made um, the class win six marbles in the Good Deeds Bowl. So um, you are always on the lookout for good deeds done by the students. And it's amazing how it works. It makes the students want to do good deeds. Now, some of you might be thinking, ano ba yan? Gagawa lang ng good deeds para lang makapag-marble dun sa bowl? Well, I prefer that than what I see happening in many schools, in many classrooms where people put down each other. There is teasing, there is um, awayan, there is even bullying. I prefer a class where the students are trying to outdo each other in doing good deeds. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a device I've used in grade four, grade five, grade six classrooms. And it's so wonderful to see a classroom where students are trying their best to do good deeds. And then to catch my attention that they are doing the good deeds because they want to win a marble for the class. Now, remember, when, the, when I put a marble there, it's a reward. It's like a reward for the whole class, not just to John not just to Joanna, not just to Joey. And many times, whenever I have to put a marble in the good deeds bowl, it is met with an applause from the class, a celebration that a classmate has done something good that makes the whole class be rewarded for it. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a device that can be used by any teacher teaching any subject, but is simply concerned about creating a culture of good deeds in the classroom. Here's another one, merit or reward system, always on the lookout for um, merit. Like, okay, class, this week, this row five has been getting perfect scores in the, uh, all the quizzes, the recitations, Good job, bro, for because of that, you get 10 merits for this week. Let's see if the other rows will also be able to get merits by reciting, by participating, by being very active, by being cooperative, by being very supportive. I will not have to watch, uh, shout, scream, or yell, or get angry at any student because every single row is trying to outdo each other because of the merits they want to get because of a reward that they get okay in other words what you are doing here is you are creating a certain class culture and identity you know when the teacher is able to say something like this 
He is a good teacher. She is a good teacher. Okay, class. Uh, I'm not going to... We're going to attend an assembly. Okay? We're going to attend an assembly. Please show the rest of the school what it means to belong to this class. Don't make me um, reprimand you. Don't do anything that will make me upset, that will have to... Uh, that will make me go to you to correct you. Behave in the best possible way and show the school what it means to belong to grade 5B best bets class. You see, you've created a class culture, a class identity that is based on values, virtues, self-control, excellence. Okay, the trophy technique is similar to what I mentioned earlier about rows. Okay, class, this week, the row that has been most participative, most supportive, best in the quizzes, in the getting perfect scores in the quizzes, is row number four. Row four owns the trophy this week. Let's see where we will give the trophy next week which role will be most participative most cooperative most uh, in best in recitation best in the quizzes so it's like a, a competition and i love a class like that where every role is trying to outdo each other in being the best role as far as participation is concerned behavior is concerned Studying hard is concerned. Excelling, doing well in the quizzes, in the tests is concerned. Let's see whose, who, whose role will have the trophy. It can be a literally real trophy. It can be a virtual trophy, just a certificate. Or it can even just be a verbal trophy. Like you are just saying, this week the trophy is in row four. And everybody knows that that tro uh, row four has been the one best participating, supporting, cooperating, and excelling in the quizzes and in the tests or whatever other activities you have. Trophy technique. It works. It works. I mean, really, uh, when students are given a challenge to do good, be good, be excellent, they step up and they cooperate. They, they work as a team. Okay, I'm down to my last few minutes. Just um, two or three strategies from Hal Urban, and then we are done for the day. I'm going to give you the um, link where you can get the um, certificate. No? The most important thing Hal Urban did as a teacher is this. To welcome students inside this classroom as a human being. He would greet every single student coming inside this classroom, um, looking at them, shaking their hands with a smile on the face to greet them and welcome them. It happened because on, he learned this, he learned to do this on his first year as a teacher on the last day last day tapos nag final nag final exam ang mga estudyante and they were submitting their papers and here came one student a lady a girl giving the paper her final paper to Hal Urban and at that moment Hal Urban realized what well, i don't even remember talking to this girl I don't even remember her full name. I don't even remember how her voice sounds like. And Hal Urban realized, I am a bad human being towards this girl. I did not treat her like a real human being. She was just a class number. And so at that moment, he made a decision. From here on, I will have to treat every student as a decent human being, and I would love to make sure I welcome them. So from that point on, and he would teach for more than 20 years, every single day, he would welcome every student with a handshake. And then 
this quotation, never let the demands of your job cause you to forget that each one of your students is a feeling, thinking human being. And for education to be effective, it must be personal. After all, as John Dewey says, the deepest urge in human nature is the desire to be important. Eventually, some of them would not be, I mean, would um, not like the shaking hands. They prefer a high five. Okay, high five. Some of them preferred a fist bump. Okay, fist bump. Some of them later on would prefer a hug because they never get a hug in their life. Okay, whatever it is, but treat every human, every student as a human being inside your classroom. Now, some of you might be thinking, Mr. Rentoy, I cannot do that. Ang dami kong studyante. And besides, parang shaking hands, hindi naman Pinoy yun eh. Okay, so anong gusto mo? Mano po? Oh, sige, mano po sila. Every time they enter your classroom or talagang wala kang oras, sige. But make it a point to have eye contact with every single one of them at least once throughout the period. An eye contact. And an eye contact that expresses, I'm happy to see you here. I'm glad to have you here. I'm that kind of sense of respect for the young people. And then they learn it from us, what it means to deal with um, other human beings. Second, most important thing he did as a teacher, he taught them manners and the golden rule. You see, um, regardless of what subject you are teaching, you can do this. Always correct their mistake in manners. Like when you're distributing test papers and a student gets it with a sense of entitlement. You remember what we used to tell kids when somebody gives them a gift or a candy? What do we say? I mean, that we tell the kid, oh, what do you say? Say thank you. You see, that's manners. To be able to say thank you, please, sorry. For example, the kids today, if they want to ask for a handout, Sir, I was absent last meeting. I need a handout. Ba? Napaka self-entitled. You have to teach them to say, May I please have a handout because I was absent last meeting? Or, uh, please, sir, I need a copy of the handout. So, uh, do not fail to remind them about manners and then the golden rule in fact in the class advisory session i will be talking about this there's nothing wrong with simply telling the students okay class there is only one rule we have inside our classroom and that is um the golden rule 